Welcome to Tick Boot Camp Podcast Episode 6. The title of today's podcast is Michelle Dates is a Tick Hacker, and this is her story. So my name is Richard Hannison. I'm Matt Petitello. And welcome, Michelle, and thank you for joining us on our podcast. Well, thank you for having me this morning out here in California at 9 a.m. How are you guys today out there in New York? We're doing very well, Michelle, and thank you for uh, participating. We, uh, one of the reasons why we wanted to invite you to our podcast uh, as a L.A.-based uh, Lyme advocate is uh, because many people believe that Lyme disease and tick diseases are an East Coast phenomenon. And uh, we were excited to find an advocate like you who's working um, on your, as what you call, vector-borne diseases. Uh, we here uh, at Tick Boot Camp call them uh, tick diseases uh, on the West Coast. Yes, yes, it is a West Coast disease. We'd like to share with our listeners a little bit about your background before you got sick. So can you share okay. with us what, you, what you did professionally and, and what your life was like before you got sick? Okay, so this is what I did. Uh, I used to be in the medical field at Cedars-Sinai. I went to college for that and worked and then got into the entertainment industry in the early 90s by a fluke. Started working, got my license in the skincare and the beauty field, worked on a lot in a movie lot. Next thing you know, I'm doing other things on TV, stage, theater, a lot of different things. So for myself, uh, I was the entertainment type of background of loving to gab with my patients, but never thought I could do what I had done. So I started working. I traveled with work. I went back east, actually, but I went to Chicago. Uh, I was living in Vegas for a year for work, trained a lot of people in the makeup industry, became a teacher, and then I came back from Las Vegas in 2000 and. Uh, Three, and that's when I got sick. But let me tell you, I was living a very high life. I was not sick. I did not have any problems. I, I am single, but I date. I had a very, very fulfilled uh, social life. I have friends in the city. It sounds like that you really were, you were doing a lot of great things. Um, you had a really, a really active life. You were, you were very successful. You had a great social life. And, you, were, you know, things were going really, really well for you at that point. And then all of a sudden you got sick, right? Is that sort of what happened? And, and that's what happened. I got sick. I, I got nauseous. I kept telling people I was nauseous, and I thought it was the flu. And right. then I got very sick, and I ended up in the ER, and they thought it was food poisoning. And that's how it began for myself. But I was here in Upland, California at that time, and then I moved to Los Angeles where my mother was at that time, and I still was not getting any care from doctors over at Cedars. And, you know, Cedars is a great hospital, any hospital I went to, so I don't blame any hospital, any doctor. Nobody knew what to do for my stomach, my nausea, my body aches. I was just physically, mentally sick and couldn't lift my head. So, Michelle, it isn't uncommon for folks to see at least seven doctors on average before they're diagnosed with Lyme disease or, in your case, a, a uh, tick disease. Um, you, exactly. You indicated earlier you were, you were treated or at least you saw um, in excess of 30 doctors before you were finally properly diagnosed. I, I, that's about right. I, I, I'm not lying to you. I probably went to about 15 uh, regular MDs. I went to GIs, gastroenterology. I went to ENTs. I went to infectious disease, which the labs were coming up not accurate that I noticed. My lymph, uh, lymph which is in the uh, medical world, your lymph drainage, your lymphocytes, these blood cells didn't look right to me. They looked low. They weren't properly uh, taken care of, and one physician did say, you're just stressed, maybe you have some toxicity, just detox, and that's about the extent of it at that time, and that was in 2006. Wow. Yes, I'm going to interrupt real quick, Michelle, because um, our listeners know my story already, and you do from our, our previous discussions, where uh, I had a very similar experience, where I was living a very healthy, active, successful life, and then I just got really sick, and my life just took a, you know, a complete turn for the worse. 
and I went through many doctors, um, many false diagnoses, uh, and it took me two years to get a proper Lyme diagnosis in my case, and it really, really just changed my life completely. And if it weren't for my family, and it sounds like you have a very supportive family and your, and your mother, and my mother was very supportive in my um, treatment as well, um, we may not be where we are today. And, uh, you know, exactly. it's just amazing how you can go from being so, so healthy and running such a great life that you, you get really, really sick, right? Um, so, Michelle, tell exactly. us how, you, who, how, how did you finally hit your diagnosis? What was, the, what was the moment where you recognized that you had a tick disease? Well, I'll tell you, I actually got on the Internet because I was a teacher, so I knew about the Internet. I'm not savvy on the Internet. And I started to Google about the toxicity and different type of detoxing, toxicity, candida, different things like that, and came up Lyme disease. I figured maybe I had that. I actually have a cousin who said, I have a great doctor for you uh, who is integrative. He's not a Lyme doctor. He's just a very good internal medicine integrative doctor who is well known all over the world and does a lot of things. And so I booked an appointment and it took me eight months to see him. And I said, please, will you run this test. It was a local test, actually. He did not run the big uh, Western blot at Igenix Lab up in Northern California. And he said, I can't believe it. You have some co-infections. And that's when it came. He said, you actually knew what you had. And from that point on, the bond of him and I became. So, Michelle, um, so you actually self-diagnosed yourself. It sounds like you went to 30 different doctors, and in the end, your own research led to your diagnosis with your, your uh, doctor that you had found, it sounds like. Is that accurate? Egg accurate. And mold as wow. well. He can, yeah, yeah. I've actually diagnosed and, everything. Wow. And it wasn't, just, it wasn't just you had one tick disease. You had many tick diseases. You know, you referred to the I sure tick, did. These are all just a wide variety of tick diseases, and the more you have, the thicker you get, right? Exactly. You have Bartonella, you have sweats, you have nausea, you have fever, you have alicia, you have animus plosis. I mean, these are all uh, malaria. These are all, these are diseases that people, they say they get when they travel, they go to Africa. You don't think you get that in your own backyard, in a wood pile, or hiking. So, Michelle, how, how did you and your doctor ultimately establish a plan uh, to help you heal from the tick diseases that you were diagnosed with? Well, it started out because he's very integrative. As I said, he's not a Lyme disease doctor, and he does a lot for other things, you know, people that are sick and then people that want holistic care, integrative, and a lot of people like that. So what we had to do was detox my body and bring my immune system up. So he does sell a lot of supplements as well. And he had a lot of IVs in the office that a lot of people do, but it's very hard to afford those. And people do pay for those that can, but it's not the cure-all, but it brings you in remission. So that's what I did. I did a lot of detoxing, a lot of blood ozone to clean my blood, to bring my cells up with vitamin Bs, a lot of different type of uh, immune therapy type of uh, supplements that he had in the office. I have to say, I made a cocktail that is for uh, superbugs. It was a Nutribomb by another doctor in Washington from uh, Germany uh, who is well known. Um, and that's what I did. I did it morning and night. I actually got him in a sauna. I have a sauna. My doctor said, if you can go in a sauna, once you're stopped that dizziness, that vertigo, sit in that and detox. So I did a lot at home besides doing a lot in his office. But remember, not everyone has the financial thing to go to a doctor's office. So you have to do a lot at home yourself. And that's what we did. I did a lot at home. Wow. So it sounds like you really took, you, you tackled this from all different angles with your, with your doctor where uh, you, you did some antibiotic therapies and you did some natural holistic therapies to promote your, yes. immune, your immune system health, to remove the toxins and detox all the toxins within your body. So you really hit this from all angles. Um, and, and about how long were you on those antibiotics for, uh, Michelle? You know, not a long time. I mean, a few months I was on 
it, it helped, but it was not the answer. So I always tell people when they say the antibiotics are the cure-all, we thought it may be the cure-all. It was not the cure-all. So putting a port in because my veins were so bad was good at that time, but it, it came back, and we realized the natural medicine was a lot better. So and it was a Michelle, natural, medicine, not- some, natural medicine, sometimes IV, the doctor did in his office, uh, blood ozone. That the ozone that you were taking? Yes, the ozone therapy. Some people do stem cell, um, just regular, um, you know, B12, Meyer cocktails. There are different type of cocktails that these doctors give names for that mix a lot of vitamins with that. Uh, and then you go home with their other regimens on top of it. So you have to go home and do the supplements. So that's what I did. But I didn't do it every day. I, you know, I didn't have that kind of money to do it every day. So if I did it once a week for maybe six weeks, then I stopped. And the yeah, stuff and I, got so, better. It, it, so some of the other things I think you had done as well were – you know, um, things that I learned really late in the game is to take strong probiotics to, to start to promote your gut health again and get your gut health better. Uh, exactly. You also, you also did some um, turmeric, which is known to reduce inflammation. So you put turmeric in your food to cut back on the inflammation, which is one of the, the factors that causes the pain and a lot of the symptoms with, with Lyme disease and uh, these, other, these other tick infections that you can get in tick diseases. So it exactly. also sounds like above and beyond the antibiotics, and the holistic natural approach with these herbs and supplements, you know, the, you know all the vitamins, uh, all the probiotics, you also then change your diet where you, you recognize that gluten was a big trigger for you to feel, feel ill as well. So it sounds like I think exactly. you really modified your diet to, to take advantage of these superfoods to keep you healthy. So you really hit it from all these angles. Can you speak a little bit about those, those superfoods and some of, the, some of the shakes and some of, the, some of the, the food that you eat that really helps you feel better and not feel sick the next day? I, I sure will. I'll start off. My doctor did give me a food test. I'll never forget that. And when he came back to me the first month I was with him, he said, you're going to love celery for the next year because everything had inflammation in my body, bananas, everything that we love. So I had to cut everything out. So when I was able to get a little bit better, I started to do the things that he suggested. So the probi- probiotics. Now, some people take 100 billion. You know, they sell things in the store. I always tell my friends and friends online, ask your doctor what's best for your belly because I am not a doctor and I'm not going to diagnose you. But probiotics are the best to repair that leaky gut. So I take about 200 billion. So I make that, I take that, and then I also make a shake. So I make a blueberry shake that has an antioxidant with fiber. Because if you don't have the fiber, you need at least 20 grams of fiber every day to release all those toxins in the GI tract anyways. So I put a little uh, protein drink in there that has turmeric, skullcap, Promulane, these are all anti-inflammatory agents that bring down the inflammation that people get with arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and a lot of things that contribute to Lyme disease as well. And people that don't realize what Lyme disease is, and they probably have it, and it helps them. And so that's what I've been doing the last years. I do videos on that. Uh, people see it on Facebook. Um, and that's what I do. My doctor did not teach me to do these shakes. I just went ahead and did them one day and had a good time, and it actually helped. When you have friends that are going out for Super Bowl Sunday and they're having a drink and having all those beans and salsa and you can't with the gluten and it's tearing your stomach apart, I found a way of having guacamole, which is great omegas, Put some cilantro, which is a great detoxer. Make a little shake with blueberry antioxidant. Put a little lemon in there, which is a good detoxer on the side. Hey, you got yourself a party like the rest. Why not be part of the group? You're doing a great job of of, of hacking, and that's why we we were happy to invite you onto the program and define you as a tech hacker. So, Michelle, uh, tell us a little bit about how you're feeling now that you've uh, gone through this uh, journey and uh, what recommendations you have for folks who are, um, who are not as far along in the journey as you are to uh, getting themselves closer to a uh, healthier life. Well, one, I would say 
research. You must research. If you do not research, you won't get anywhere. You need to pick up that internet and look and research. Second, do the diet, do the gluten-free, do the supplements, and then you hear the other side, I'm broke, I don't have the money, but a little bit at a time. It doesn't cost a lot of money to have a couple of berries or have a little probiotics. There are things you can eat. Sauerkraut is a great probiotic that you can get 69 cents at Walmart. So there's a lot of things you can do to build the body up, and that's what I did. How do I feel today? I have my days. I am not I was in remission. Now I've gone down a little bit. And due to, I have sinus problems, and that's why it's gone down. Once an infection comes in the body, it brings that whole immune system down. And so I need to bring it back up. And that's where I'm at now, but I'm a lot better than I was, I would say. So I have come a long way. I would tell someone to research try a little bit at a time and do it and do the work. You will get better. It's just taking that first step. Michelle, it sounds like you've come a really long way from the time you first got sick when you were, when you were really, really ill to where you are today. And you've come a long way. Um, you recognize that there's really no cure for Lyme disease and other tick diseases. However, you found ways to really to, to combat that and, and um, come, come a long way with your health. So, can you speak a little bit about that? Do you, do you agree that you've come a long way and you're healthier than you were? I you know, do. I, yes, I have come a long way. I, I have to say, you know, I bring this a big circle, family. Family is really important. And at first, I have a really great mom. I have to say, give her kudos because she is my sole supporter. But it was very hard to convince her her and family, what I'm going through. And once I got her in that bubble and she realized that, things got a lot better. So, yes, I have come a long way. If it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't be where I am. So you need a support system, at least one person. Someone needs someone and a doctor. If you can get your doctor to bond, that's great. But you do. My family, not everyone was on board with me and and maybe not today still, but it took a very long time, and I just didn't stop. You've got to be persistent. You can't give up. This disease, you cannot give up. It, it, it's yeah. like a, I call it the cancer. I hate to say it because there's no cure. The remission, you can, you can feel better, but you can get sick again. So there really is, is no cure yet. Folks wanted to uh, follow your journey. I understand that you have a social media presence and you put up um, YouTube videos. Can you share with our listeners where they'd be able to find uh, the advice that you're giving on a regular basis? I am on Facebook. People do Facebook me. They do look me up on the Internet as well, and then they write me privately and tell me who they are, and uh, we kind of converse, and then I tell them, you're welcome to look at my videos. They are live on Facebook. Facebook. And if they say they came to your uh, site, you know, a tick boot camp, uh, I'm welcome to confirm them. You know how social media is today. I was so thankful you guys called me. I was doing a good job at it because we found you out here all the way from, from New York in California. Yeah, you did. So, you know, you're, you're, you're doing a great job. I mean, it's amazing how far you've come. And, and so we just thank you for taking the time to speak with us on our podcast today. I think your story thank is you great. So thank you and so much, Richard. Thank you so much, Matt. I, I've had, I had a great time. I hope it helps. We're going to just move forward.